So at its most basic level, what we're really talking about is a recipe, right? A formula for achieving a particular result. So you can, bias can creep in in either of those cases, right? It can creep in in the ingredients you're using for your recipe, and it can creep in, you know, in what you're trying to accomplish. So let me use a very basic example. You can say that the most important thing I would like my algorithm to do is hire successful employees. Okay. That can mean a lot of things, right? So what do, what do I want a successful employee to look like? You have a number of outcomes there. Maybe one you pick is, I think a successful employee is one who stays in the company a long time. Okay, that's cheap, you know, that's effective, good. That's what, we, that's what we've decided we want our algorithm to do. Now, so I go and look, well, what are the criteria that keep people here a long time? One of them might be they live closer to the, to the place where the, you know, their employment is, right? Shorter commutes mean longer retention. Okay, so that seems to be a right, relatively straightforward, straight line. But where people live turns out to be a fairly highly, not discriminatory, but people tend to, to cluster in particular areas. We still have a lot of segregation in this country. So the reality is if, you, if you're a suburban employer, your decision to favor people who live closer to your place of employment is likely to have a discriminatory impact on the kinds of people who you get. New, seemingly neutral outcome, math, as you say, but the result is potentially very discriminatory. So how do we then build our algorithm to factor that in? How do we audit it? How do we lift up those and much more complicated algorithms and look for those outcomes? So I think that's sort of what, some of what we're grappling with. 